And here we are today with Bethany Rose Cummins, one of my protégés. I coached you. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Outstanding, but I'm improving. Uh, Bethany, I want you to share your story because uh, it's been so impactful to me, and I think it can be so powerful for those watching uh, about how your story connects with guarding your heart and how God's done that in your life. So let's just pick it up. Uh, tell everybody where you're from. Um, Auburn, Indiana. And you've never gotten, raised. never gotten out of Auburn, right? Mm -hmm. You're in Jackson Township. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're Jackson Township people. I so tried to escape for a little while. But it yeah. didn't work. <laughs> and where'd you go to school? Um, Lakewood Park. Lakewood Park Christian School. And uh, you had some pretty good coaches, didn't you? Uh, hey, okay. hey, hey. Yeah. Okay. What sports did you play? Um, I played basketball for two years of high school, and then volleyball four years, and softball three years. You remember that night against Hal Military when you were leading score and you lit it up? <laughs> 18 points for varsity. That's right. That's right. It was a <laughs> huge night. Freshman year too? Yeah, it was a huge night. It was awesome. I was, I was cheering so loud I got hoarse. Yeah. Um, I want to pick it up in high school. Um, you grew up in a Christian school. You got all those coaches investing in you. You got the teachers investing in you, but something wasn't clicking on the God thing. How would you describe that? Um, I would describe it as um, when I first went there, it was like, too much almost like I just heard it all the time and I got sick of hearing it and I ended up completely resenting it and I can say by the time I was a senior and graduating I hated God and everything mm. to do with them but I mean I didn't necessarily act like that I mean I did I got good grades I did good in Bible class I knew my stuff I just didn't care about it so you kind of like faked it in a way that you were uh, one way on the outside, but inside you were totally different. Yeah. Well, you're thinking about, you know, on the inside you're one way toward God, on the outside you're another. But you had a you had a tragic accident, um, a car accident, where, for all intents and purposes, you should have been killed. Um, kind of walk me through that, and how you even did you even think about God through that? <clears throat> well. Um, the car accident happened, um, I was on my way to a concert. It was like the beginning of my senior year, the end of August. Um, it was like five o'clock in the evening, so it was still daylight. And um, I was going down a county road, my, and my car somehow, I don't remember it, went up in the air off the left side of the road, wrapped around a pole, and came back down. Um, and every single seat was crushed except for mine. Um, mm. The passenger side door pushed in to like my seat, and that's what I hit my head on. And um, there's blood splattered everywhere. Um, I really should have died. They rushed me to the emergency room. I was only there for eight hours. I walked out with a broken thumb and a concussion. Wow. Uh, yeah, there's no way I should have made it out at all. But if I would have died then, I would have gone to hell, hands down. And Afterwards, I didn't even get like a sense of gratitude for being saved. I got angry, kind of. Hmm. And I didn't understand why I was saved. I didn't understand why I didn't remember it. And it just made me angry. <laughs> Interesting. So you're spared from this accident, but it still leads to some kind of anger about God. That tells me that there's some combination of hurt fear and frustration going on inside you because psychologists think that anger is a secondary emotion and that we usually are hurt, afraid, or frustrated before we get angry. And so it sounds to me like you're frustrated with the God thing. I just keep hearing it. I keep hearing it. You're probably interpreting it as religion, and you're probably afraid of what would happen if you would ever let God control your life. You think that's accurate? Yeah. Okay, cool. So <laughs> not, not cool that you did that, but it's cool that we understand. Uh, so you go to college. Tell us, tell us about that. Um. I went to Ball State, um, and then I didn't get into anything new as far as like partying and drugs and boys or anything like that because I had already done it in high school. Uh, 
as far as I can remember, all I mean, I did a lot of stupid things in college, but none of it was new at all. Um, I didn't know a single person going into Ball State. Um, I lived in the dorms. I really didn't like my roommate, but then two girls next door I got to know, and they were just like as bad as I was. Mm -hmm. Like we got into trouble a lot. Mm -hmm. How are your grades in that time period? Um, the classes I went to were good. <laughs> <laughs> And the classes you didn't go to didn't go so well, you I know, Apparently, you got to show up to take a test <laughs> if you want to pass it. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, it was about that time that I think you started texting and emailing me? Uh, yeah. Um, go, the summer before college, I was kind of dating this guy. Um, we weren't really, like, official boyfriend-girlfriend, but, like, we'd see each other every day. We would act like we were boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, and he, my first week at Ball State, like, I cried myself to sleep every night just because I hated it there. And I would call him on the phone sometimes and literally just cry. Like, neither one of us would talk. It would just be me crying. And, like, I'd call him, and, like, he knew what I was going through, and he was going to come visit me that first Wednesday. Um, and he ended up not coming. And later on that night, he texted me and said, my ex-girlfriend's pregnant and it's mine. Mm -hmm. And to this day, that's the last thing I've heard from him. Um, and I was already going through like a hard enough time being at Ball State. And then that kind of just played into it and like not getting closure. And I didn't know at the time, but apparently I went into depression and um, I would like walk to class and not even notice a hundred people around me because I was just so like, apathetic towards everything and um, I just did things because I had to like I had no motivation for anything I lost my appetite um, and then I started having all these suicidal thoughts that I just couldn't control at all and uh, I never really thought I would commit suicide but I didn't think I would have these thoughts either and um, my best friend Jenny one of the ones from high school uh, she was talked to me one day and said that she was worried about me and I needed to get help. So Ball State offered free shrink sessions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so I went there and they put me on two different kinds of antidepressants and they called me an emergency case. Uh, I had to see a psychiatrist three times a week and then that's when we started emailing back and forth and I was telling you about what was going on. Um, then you sent me that sermon. Why do you think you emailed me? Looking back on it, um, I think I was probably trying to fill a void that was just empty and hurting and having God knowledge. I knew what was supposed to be there, but I just had no feelings towards it. Yeah, no experience, really, yeah. because there was never a heartfelt connection with God. Yeah, it's almost like I wanted to want that. See, that's so interesting to me because knowledge, as far as the Bible's concerned, the, the Greek word and the Hebrew word mean an experience, an experience with God. It's, it's intimacy with God. It's my inner being connected with His. And so it's a relationship. We have a tendency to look at knowledge when we see it in a, in a Bible verse and think it's just, it's just head knowledge. It's just mental ascent. And so you were, you were thirsty for an experience with God, an intimate relationship with God. And because you had kind of walked through religion, sort of like legalism and license, you never really knew what real love was with the God of the universe. You say it's accurate. And so now you're hurting inside. We, we had fear and frustration and now there's a lot of hurt going on. And um, I'll, I'll never forget the email because as I read it, I thought something's going on. And uh, of course, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I lived through college, you know, I understand what could have been going on to a certain extent, but I sensed there was something a lot deeper on the inside. And so I, uh, I remember you telling me, I don't even know how to pray. I don't, I don't know what to pray, how to pray, you know, what should I do? And th what I sent you was uh, uh, being online with God 24 um, seven and become a person who prays. And that's P-R-A-Y-S and it just follows the model of Jesus's prayer where he would praise God. Uh, he said that we should renew our minds, that we should ask for whatever we need, and that we should uh, yield the outcomes, uh, I'm sorry, yield all unsettled accounts to him. Uh, 
and then the S is surrender to be spirit led. And so I thought if you would start to experience God just a little bit, that maybe your heart would follow. So do you remember like what you did, you know, after you got it? Was it like, you know, what, what, what'd you think? What'd you do? <laughs> Don't be afraid to tell me you didn't do anything. Um, well, the challenge was to pray for 30 days. Yes. And uh, I was kind of like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll get right on that. <laughs> and, uh, <coughs> Um, I really don't, I really don't think I had any intention of doing it, but, um, I wouldn't have told you that. Well, that helps me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the next Bethany that comes along, I'll do it differently. Um, but I mean, of course it was in the back of my mind, like, uh, and I, even if I started to pray, it's like I hadn't prayed for such a long, long time that like, I didn't know what to say. I, d I felt like it would almost be disrespectful mm -hmm. for me to pray. And um, it was one day, it was a while after that, um, my roommate was driving me nuts. And I, <laughs> I just prayed, God, please give me patience. And that's like how it started. And I actually did notice like the rest of that day, like it was kind of like, what? what? Why isn't she bothering me that much right now? <laughs> and um, uh, then it just was like, okay. And it kind of got easier and easier and prayers got longer and longer. And um, I ended up praying for the 30 days. Uh, then I found myself, instead of walking to class, not noticing anyone around me or just like having these horrible thoughts that I couldn't control. I was walking to class and praying at the same time and like just talking to God all the time. Walk and talk with God. Yeah. That's awesome. And so you're noticing a difference mm -hmm. in, a, in a relationship or in a conversation with God, so to speak. Um, now, are, were you still on the antidepressants at that time? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so we correspond back and forth a little bit. And um, I had the Restoration Road book release taking place on the weekend of March 5th, 6th, and 7th. And you and I um, coordinated that you would come to Blackhawk uh, at the book release on Sunday morning. And uh, you chose the later service, right? And uh, something happened that day. Can you describe what was going um, on inside you? <clears throat> that is when I surrendered my life to God as my Lord and Savior. and just it's not like I just said that and as cliche as this almost sounds like it really was like that moment on was completely different mm -hmm. and it's like I put my life in a little package and gave it to God and <laughs> said here you go <laughs> sweet that's a perfect illustration <laughs> I mean Paul said if you uh, believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord that uh, you know you will be saved and he's quoting an Old Testament passage. I think what you're saying is, I didn't just speak it with my mouth. I really believed it in my heart. And based on knowing you and the conversation that we had up until that point, I felt very comfortable that, I felt prompted by the Holy Spirit to ask you, you know, do you want to draw a line in the sand, put a stake in the ground, and know that on March 7th, you fully surrendered your heart, your desires of life is Christ, to Christ as Savior and Lord. And uh, in that conversation, uh, after we, after you prayed, uh, I remember asking you, okay, we need to find a woman who's farther down the road than you are on the faith journey to disciple you. And, and, uh, you know, is there anybody you, you could think of? And you came with, came up with, uh, Piper Placencia, Coach Placencia. And, uh, you had her for art too, right? Mm -hmm. you're, art, you're artistic. Yeah. Which I went to school for it. So mm -hmm. my senior year, we were together. Mm -hmm four out of eight periods of the day. So what's interesting to me is God's working in her life. And I call her and tell her the situation. She goes, good, good, really, really. She was kind of surprised that you would be at Lakewood Park Christian School and not call yourself a Christian, you know, on the inside. So you did a good job pretending. <laughs> Thank you. And she said, really? <laughs> and then I said, well, she goes, well, what do you want me to do? And I said, well, I'd just like you to, you know, I'm, t I'm thinking about the Word of God, people of God, Spirit of God. I'd like you to, you know, have the Word of God be involved, you know, read the Bible together in some fashion. Um, and you're the people of God. <laughs> And I said, the Spirit of God, I'd like you to pray and just kind of kind of do life with her. She goes, what? You want me to do that? You know, and what was going on, see, uh, she's probably shared it with you, but um, I, had, I had spoken at a uh, uh, teacher chapel before school, 
and I had given the challenge. It was on Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight means to make my heart pliable, um, and give means to orchestrate. So when I make my heart pliable, when I surrender my heart to, to God or to Christ, he begins to shape my desires to be like his. And so I gave this challenge, say, uh, I, I said, just, I want you to pray for 30 days. Here we go again. That was happening a lot at that time. Hey, God, give me your heart. Just really simple. Hey, God, give me your heart. She said, I didn't even know what it meant, but I started <laughs> to do it. And she said, so all these ideas that started coming to me, I started thinking, well, wait a minute. Maybe these are Holy Spirit promptings. And she said, so I started acting on them. And she goes, and this was like one of the first ones. And um, she heard a mess, you know, messages at County Line from my brother. They're coinciding with this, you know, and we're not talking. It's just, you know, it's just what God does, how, how God does what he does. So um, I, I want you to, to describe how, what that relationship was like, what it is like, and, and what it meant to you. Um, I remember the very first time after you guys talked, we met, we met at Steak and Shake. And she prayed the, before we started talking that God would just lead our conversation. She told me how, like, nervous she was. She didn't know what to do. And, like, I, she said you told her, just talk to her. <laughs> just, <laughs> just talk. <laughs> but, um, I don't know, it started off just kind of talking about, like, what I was going through, where I really was. And... Um, we would try to leave each other with the challenge every time. Uh, of course, like, we both, there's plenty of times we both kind of forgot that we were supposed to be doing that, but we're still trying to journal all the time. Um, and that was in March, mm -hmm. and um, here we are in October. Mm -hmm. And we text each other almost all the time. We're leading a Power Plus group together. Awesome. That's a small group, discipleship group at Lakewood Park Christian School. Mm -hmm. And The fun group. <laughs> um, she's kind of like discipling me, but it's almost like I'm to the point where I can almost challenge her back. And it's just a very growing relationship for both of us. And we're both just trying to say yes to God, whatever he gives us. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Now, she issued a challenge to you, I think, or and you had a couple friends that were going to do something special uh, that summer, and you were kind of reluctant. You want to tell us about yeah. that? Um, well, all that happened in March, and then, like, April, May-ish, when I was still at Ball State, um, she called me up one day and was like, uh, my brother Dayton went to this thing last summer. It's called Orlando Project, and it's where a bunch of people from Campus Outreach uh, go down to Florida for 10 weeks and the purpose of it is to like grow in your walk with Christ but you're also working at Universal Studios because you have to pay rent while you're down there. Cool. Um, and she's like, you should go. And I was just kind of like, hmm, okay. And like, the more I thought about it, I liked the idea and I really felt like God wanted me to go and I was like completely positive but A, Ball State didn't have campus outreach and B, uh, I was late for the application deadline. Mm. So I sent it in anyways, and they accepted me. And from that moment on, I was like, mm, I don't, <laughs> don't want to go. <laughs> from the day that, to the day you left, you came to the Lakewood Girls Semi-State Softball oh, yeah. match. You told Megan and me you weren't ready. You didn't want to like go. I started crying. Yeah. Um, yeah, once it became, like, when it was an idea, it was still cool. But once it became a reality, it was kind of like... <laughs> What? Mm, I'm not ready for this. That's life. So, but something major league happened to you while you were there. Uh, yes. <clears throat> I, for the, really for like the first five weeks of it, I was still iffy. I still wasn't really making that good of friends. But the first week we were there, um, the first night, we had, our meetings were called rallies. It was kind of like church service, but better college style. And, um... Our first rally was about our theme, which was redefined. And he talked about 2 Corinthians 5.17, and it says, Therefore, if you're in Christ, you're, you are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And that was like, our, that was our theme verse. And when you're in Christ, you really are a new creation. And you're completely new and like me I mean I was only like two months old mm -hmm. and I was still having a lot of problems letting go of the old me and letting go of the past so that just like hit me right where I was at and um, 
that was incorporated in the whole summer. And then later on that week, we had, we separated into boys and girls and talked about Proverbs 7, which is about an adulterous woman pretty much and just how like evil she is and how she just like lures people to her, like guys to her and like they're walking into their death. And it talks about an ox going to slaughter. Yeah. And like how an ox has no idea what's coming, but they're going to be dead in like two minutes. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly how this woman is. And as they're up there talking about it, like I was just being convicted so much. And like, that's exactly how I was for five years. And I, for five years, I just spent a life full of lust. And uh, by lust, I mean like everything to do with it. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't want to be that way. And I realized that I never really actually confessed that and never really actually apologized for that. It was kind of like the same thing I do with my parents, kind of like, God knows, I know, we'll just move on. Like, mm -hmm. we both know what happened. We both know I'm sorry, we'll just move on. Mm -hmm. But I never actually say anything. So um, after that talk, I it was just really heavy on my heart all summer, actually. And I found some older women on staff at Campus Outreach to talk to about it. Um, and I ended up, like, trying to protect myself so much during the summer and, like, just get over this temptation that um, 2 Timothy 2.22 um, says, flee then from youthful passions and pursue righteousness, peace, and other things. <laughs> and uh, <Wow. laughs> um, I got to the point where, like, I struggled with lust all summer, and I got to the point where I couldn't look at the guys because I would automatically be thinking things I shouldn't think. And, like, we had dress codes, so that wasn't a problem. Um, to where prior I would have like dressed a certain way just to get very specific attention from a very specific person. Mm -hmm. Like I knew exactly what to do mm -hmm. and I was good at it. And mm -hmm. um, so controlling my thoughts was really hard and I just told myself that verse over and over and over again. And sometimes I would tell myself 2T222. Oh, <laughs> like, cool. just to, 2T222. Yeah, just to get it like in my head. And really by the end of the summer, I mean, it's not like that problem's ever going to disappear for me, but it wasn't that, like, it wasn't that big of a struggle for me. It's like I prayed about it so much that my heart really didn't belong to that anymore. Wow. It's interesting that that's full circle. Um, that uh, hurt that you were feeling from the uh, boyfriend and where there wasn't closure and all that. You kind of come full circle that only God can satisfy those desires and no guy's ever really going to do that. I mean, I assume you believe that now, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because um, you feel differently about God. You want to <clears throat> describe that? Okay. This is the best way I know how to describe it. Okay. Um, and I don't know how boys feel when they have crushes. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Um, when a girl has a crush on a boy, like, she just kind of, like gets all like giddy and like it's just <laughs> inside and like thinks about him all the time, wants to be with him all the time, wants to talk to him all the time, probably annoys the boy. <laughs> and um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> like she's just constantly thinking about him and um, that's how I feel about Jesus. And I, when I say that, like, I feel like it sounds kind of corny, but really, I mean, that's how it is. No. And I was reading through uh, the book of John because they told us, like, when we're evangelizing to people to tell them to start reading that. And I was like, well, I've never actually read it. Um, and that's when I really fell in love with them because you just get to know him as a person. And it's like he becomes real to you. And I don't the love that he gives you and, like, he just... You're his bride, and you're beautiful to him all the time. And I, I don't know. I'm, just, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. <laughs> it's incredible. It's the value of a relationship. It's, it's who you were designed for. And uh, I just think it's so powerful. And uh, I thought your story was so powerful that, uh, again, through the prompting of Piper Placentia, we had you speak at chapel at Lakewood Park Christian School, and um, you were uh, flooded 
with yeah. girls afterwards who wanted to talk with you, pray with you. And one girl in particular surrendered her life to Christ that day. And you felt the prompting then that maybe uh, you were living in Indianapolis at the time, right? Yeah. And you felt the prompting that maybe it was time to come back? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, in Indianapolis, uh, <clears throat> campus outreach was down there. I wasn't going to school there, but I was still, like, with them all the time. And, like, I, I really liked having that body. Um, but at the same time, like, I just felt like God could really use me back home. And that's a lot for me to say because I was ready to leave this town and never, ever come back. And um, I financially wasn't doing too good. And a lot of people down there offered me to stay. So, I mean, it's like I tried to stay and people tried to help me stay. But after a couple weeks, like, I realized that I really shouldn't be there. And it was a really hard decision for me to make, but I ended up back here. And within the first week of being back here, God showed me that you're doing good. This is where you need to be. Awesome. And you're investing in the lives of uh, students at Lake Park Christian School. You're investing in the lives of others in other ministries. Uh, you've been able to share your testimony and, and uh, uh, impact many for Christ uh, in just a few short weeks, really. And now you're enrolled in uh, a dental assistant mm -hmm. program, and you should be graduated when? June 24th. So on June 24th, all you dentists out there, this is your girl. You need to hire Bethany. <laughs> we'll arrange for the contact information. <laughs> uh, Bethany, I want to thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, we've done life together, and it's so uh, cool for me to see the girl that I coach turn into a woman who God's using to draw others to himself. And uh, I just want to thank you for being on the Restoration Road today. And wherever you are, I would invite you to have a conversation with God to, to take Bethany's challenge. And how about for 30 days, you just ask God, hey God, give me your heart. God, give me your heart. And as Psalm 37, 4 says, as David wrote, as you uh, make your heart pliable and you surrender your heart to him, he will orchestrate in you the desires of your heart. And above all else, he'll guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. Whether you're struggling with the licentious sins of a smoke, a toke, a, a cut, or a pop of a pill, or the legalistic sins of religion, of manipulating the deity of the universe. Restoration Road is for you. It's designed for you to walk that journey with Christ as he takes everything in your life and makes it new. We've developed a book study guide and DVD that you can get at mitchcruz.com or therestorationroad.com.